We're here with Jim Tobin, uh, chairman of ASP American Sea Trade Association. Jim, can you tell us about some of the exciting things that are going on at ASTA? I guess starting at the helm, literally at the helm. Well, uh, our our fiscal year runs um, starting July 1, so we're about six months into the year. And when I started with this uh, this job as chairman, our, our focus was and is to, to get our strategic plan implemented. So in the middle of doing all that, and, and we, we had a board meeting in September, just before the board meeting, Dick Crowder, our CEO, who's just doing a phenomenal job for us, approached me and said um, that he'd been asked to accept the nomination to be the Ag Trade Ambassador, uh, managing all the Ag Trade for the United States. And it's really a ter terrific opportunity, and we're, we're excited for him, but it means that we're in the process of selecting a new CEO. Uh, obviously, this is a critical time with World Trade Organization negotiations uh, for agriculture. Where is ASTA uh, as far as all of this goes? Um, what would ASTA like to see um, results from all of those negotiations? Well, um, the negotiations are complicated. We, we represent 850 members, um, and we go everything from we have an organic committee, we have biotech trait developers, we have uh, folks doing corn and soybeans. We have folks doing vegetables and flower seed. It's, it's a very wide and diverse group. Um, so we're, we're very supportive of the U.S. position on, on uh, the world trade um, work. Uh, we have committees that have the capability of providing advice as questions come in. And um, our, our desire is to make sure that legislators and negotiators, those involved in the process, other associations, look to ASTA for any questions about seed. Um, overall, we, we believe in, in uh, having open trade of seed. Uh, we, we think regulations are appropriate, but they need to be practical. And um, whenever we see things that our members tell us are a problem, we, we work to solve those. Um, and in a trade round like this, you try to make sure that all the major things are, are considered. Uh, but in a broad sense, that, that's how we'll approach it. I think that the, that the main three pillars uh, of agriculture that are being addressed in the negotiations um, that, you know, the direction in which those are moving now is going to benefit the seed industry and, like it will, presumably, all of agriculture. Um, I mean, opening up markets, obviously, the seed business is very global, and I presume that that's just going to further that globalization. Trade is very good for us. We have members who are doing a lot of trade today. We have members who would like to do more. Um, and what you hope for is a free opportunity to compete worldwide in, in the seed industry. And um, in most cases, we can do that, but in some cases, you can. And so whatever can be done to help uh, promote trade is uh, very beneficial to, to our members. Moving, uh, looking domestically, of course, we're on the brink of a 2007 farm bill. Um, are there uh, particular priorities that ASTA has for the farm bill? Uh, what will it be pushing for? We don't have a, a position paper on the Farm Bill. Um, we have formed a, a Farm Bill committee that each of the divisions will have uh, either the division chair or a designee serve on the committee. And then we're inviting anyone who wants to join the committee and, and get involved, roll up their sleeves and work. And the committee, again, will work to help bring from the grassroots what people are concerned about. Um, some examples I could give you, the last Farm Bill, um, we worked to make sure, and this didn't get in the Farm Bill, but it got adjusted in the rules, uh, counter-cyclical payments were based on proven yield. Well, people growing seed for us are getting a lower yield because they're growing hybrid seed, um, and you, you don't get the same yield as you would with a commercial hybrid. Um, and we were able in the rules making to help allow a farmer that was growing seed, hybrid corn for our members to get the county average rather than what they actually produced uh, being used for counter cyclical payments. And so something like that can make a big difference. Uh, it helps the farmers that are growing for us and it ultimately helps our members who can more economically have their seed crop grown. Things like that you want to work on. We, we um, always have to keep an eye on um, anything that has to do with, uh, with how the, the folks growing seed or, or uh, selling seed are, are treated in a, in a farm bill. And, and so we'll, we'll have a grassroots effort and, and a committee working on it to uh, coordinate uh, 
what we have. And again, we want legislators who are making these policies to look to ask them when they have questions about seed. We, we expect to be involved in, in helping uh, make sure that the legislation makes sense. What are the other key uh, policy issues that you've been working on since you've been at, as president of the ASTA? Excuse me, chairman. Chairman. Um, well, we're working on our strategic plan. Um, some key things there. Intellectual property is the core of what we're about. Um, if you're developing a new hybrid or a new variety, you're, you're spending, in most cases, seven years of investment uh, research before you actually sell the product. And we want to make sure that to encourage people to make that kind of investment that they can get paid for it. And so we, we spend a lot of time both here in the United States and internationally um, working on and making sure that uh, intellectual property is, is protected. Um, and that takes a lot of forms. Uh, sometimes uh, states will try to preempt federal legislation, and uh, that can be troublesome for um, intellectual property. It can be troublesome for labeling. For example, our vegetable growers don't want to have to put a different label on their vegetable seed packets for every state or every county. Uh, it becomes very, very costly. So we, we work on things to help make sure that um, that we have federal regulations at work that are practical and that, uh, that states don't preempt the federal laws in ways that, that are disruptive. Um, uh, what about state legislative initiatives? I mean, there, there have been some uh, challenges uh, with respect to biotechnology, particularly in California. Um, is ASTA involved at, at that level? We, we provide help to the states. In most cases, when there's a state initiative, the state association will take the lead. Um, but we will draw on resources from our members to help provide the background information. Let me give you an example. Uh, Vermont um, wanted to enact legislation that would have severely limited the ability to sell traits contained biotech in the state. And um, we had Gary Kushner and Dick Crowder spend time with the, with the Secretary of Agriculture. And he was very appreciative of getting the help, by the way, um, and helped them to understand um, what's already available, the information that's, that's provided on the seed label and in all the promotional material. And we're able to avoid some legislation that would have been pretty restrictive uh, in, in that state. So we, we provide support when asked uh, if there's a state association that we really want to work with. Politics are local, so you want to allow the state people right. to do the work. Uh, as part of our strategic plan, we're going to add a state um, government affairs person to help increase the capacity of our staff to uh, provide that kind of support. Terrific. And we're excited about that. Um, what are some of the other elements of this new strategic plan? You mentioned a couple of things, and it sounds like you are making a fair number of changes. Sure. We're, we're trying to um, increase our capacity as, as we can. We, we want to add a person to work with uh, public affairs, public relations. Uh, you, you worked with us many years ago. <laughs> And uh, we recognize a lot of the work you were doing was very important. And um, we're now in a position where we can fund that kind of work. And so we'll be adding a position there. If the New York Times calls and wants a question to be answered about C, we want to have the capacity and the capability to pull that off. Now, Dick Crowder could do that, but Dick wasn't always in the office. And so we're, we're going to strengthen the, the capacity there. Um, we'll continue to work very hard on intellectual property. We're going to continue to work on international seed issues. Uh, we're going to strengthen this seed association of the Americans program. We think that can be very, very helpful in, in promoting trade within North and South America. And we also, to do this, have to strengthen our financial position. So we're looking at dues structure. Uh, we're looking at um, we have a number of conventions like the one we are we're here today in Chicago. Um, by doing some things with sponsorship, we can help people promote their company or promote their products, um, pay us something to do that, and avoid having to raise the dues as much as we might otherwise. So we're looking at a number of ways to, mm -hmm. to raise funds. Um, obviously, if you put a good product together, a good convention, a good program, a seminar, people are willing to pay to come to that. And, and uh, you either grow or die. And so we're, we're working very hard <laughs> to grow and, and improve the capacity and capability of our staff and our, in our overall program. Sounds good. Now, a uh, program like Market Choices, is that um, also an opportunity to, you know, keep the vitality of the association? Yes. Market Choices was a program that was developed to help um, 
make a more standard presentation of a regulatory um, market issue um, when uh, traits were approved in the U.S. and Japan for food and feed, but they weren't yet approved in Europe. Europeans weren't regulating processed feed at the time, so we created a label that said, told the farmer exactly what he was getting when he or she bought um, a hybrid and, and helped them determine how to market it and where they could market it. Uh, the regulations have, have uh, changed in Europe, so they are regulating processed feed, so it's even more complicated now. But that, that's a good example. Another one we're working on now, we have a committee working on uh, intellectual property protection, education, helping dealers and farmers understand why paying a royalty or why paying a tech fee is, is valuable and, and why you should buy a new seed each year. It can only help our industry to have our customers better understand why we're doing this. So are you looking to launch a series of workshops, for example, on, on intellectual property in the U.S.? I know EFTA, you know, has held such workshops overseas, but is this something that you're looking to expand upon? Um, the committee will look at a number of different things. I think the most likely thing to come out of it is uh, educational material, um, presentations that we could go to a Farm Bureau meeting in Iowa and have someone that knows about intellectual property and see, describe, and explain, and have a good presentation to give. Um, we could have material ready to go with legislators on Capitol Hill or in state houses. Um, we could uh, have promotional material that you can mail to folks when they have questions about this. Um, and we've considered some video work also to um, increase the communication capability. Um, really? But we, we, <laughs> might, we might go beyond that. In fact, we'd probably <laughs> like to have you interview the committee and do something like this that, that would help get the message out. Mm -hmm. the, the committee's still meeting, but uh, we hope to have uh, product ready to go in the spring. And I want to talk to you about uh, sharing that. Basically, looking you know, 2006, what, where are the, the greatest opportunities for the association? You've got a lot going on. Um, what, if you could kind of walk us through what's going to be rolled out over the next several months. Well, we'll be getting a new CEO on board. That's critical. Uh, Dick Crowder's done a phenomenal job of uh, taking us to a new level. And uh, we'll never accept where we were before because we're used to being able to have additional capability. So we're looking forward to bringing a new person in and getting them trained and, and uh, knowledgeable and, and uh, performing at a high level. Um, we want to increase, as I said, the capability and the capacity of our staff. We'll be adding two staff positions. Um, we'll be rolling out intellectual property education programs. And we'll continue to upgrade the, the seminars and conventions that we, we put together. Uh, we'll be very active in working on the Farm Bill and uh, providing whatever support we can to the WTO negotiations. And with Dick uh, involved in that, uh, I think that will help a great deal. So we're, we're excited about uh, what we're doing. It's, uh, the, the summer convention is going to be held here in Chicago. And uh, we tell people it's quite a bit nicer in Chicago in <laughs> July than it is in December. I encourage them to come and join us. As a local resident, I can certainly vouch for that. Yes. Uh, so are you going to be ready to pass the gavel in June, or are you going to be hanging on to it? <laughs> well, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization, and, and no one person does all the work. It, as you know, it's, um, we've, we've got a good group of officers. Gary Arthur is in the next chair, and uh, he's very, very knowledgeable about what we're doing. He's been working with ASSA for years, and I feel very confident that uh, the good work that has occurred so far will continue under, under Gary's leadership. Well, thanks for your good work.